Hey, this is John Carlos, and I'm here to review the Sideshow Collectibles exclusive version of the Sideshow Collectibles six scale figure of Ash Williams from Evil Dead 2. Groovy. Here's a quick look at the packaging, which features the Sideshow sticker on the front. That's the mark of freshness. That's how you know the figure's good. Just kidding, that's how you know the figure has exclusive stuff. Oh, a nice little thank you, that's nice. So here's how the figure looks right out of the packaging, and it's pretty much good to go. And I gotta say that it looks pretty good. Uh, the details on this, on the whole, are pretty solid. The shirt itself has like a good texture to it. it certainly reads like a shirt with nice strong fabric. The buttons look good. Uh, same thing with the pants. Details on the belt. And really strong work on the shoes. Uh, I'll just focus on there. You can see the little details in the surface. Really strong surface here. You can tell the two different kind of uh, surfaces between the light brown and the dark brown. The shoes and the lacing look really good. I think that's pretty solid. Even the, the soles look nice. Um, pants look good. They have all the nice details. Like First of all, there's not just the, the cut there, but there's dirt around the cut, which is nice. The pants have uh, you know kind of dirt, darker kind of browns and kind of lighter greens. Um, so there, it isn't just like a basic brown. I really appreciate that kind of detail. Some thought went into this. Um, the rip on the shirt looks good, especially around the sleeves too, nice and tattered. Um, it's definitely the way the shirt gets ripped in the movie. Also, uh, speaking of rips, this little shirt on his, uh, I mean the cut on his right sleeve, including that little sewing line right there. So nice little details from the movie. One thing that does kind of bum me out though is, you know, the wrap on his, his right stump area. You can see the ball joint through it. And then that's not just like the camera's angle, like when I'm just standing here looking at it, I can see it and I wish, you know, I might have to pull that down a bit to go over the ball joint, but also you need the ball to be able to uh, do its job and joint and move if you want to articulate the chainsaw, which, you know, in the movie doesn't have that much articulation. But yeah, details on the fabric look good. Details on his like sculpted chest from what you could see as far as like the blood and the dirt look good. There's his little man nipple right there and a little bit of gray right around that area. The blood spray uh, looks good. Uh, the underbody, you do see that, but it is a six scale figure so you will see that joint if you expose it. Um, the straps around his shirt look good too, including the little hook that the, uh, the chainsaw pulley thing would hook onto. So I'm glad they included that. Buttons look good. But what really looks good to me is his face. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, there are a lot of ways you could have gone with this because Bruce Campbell is such an expressive actor. I mean, yeah, they captured his chin, his nose, his profile, but you could have gone squinty and like angry, you know, when he gets like kind of mad at everything. You could, you could have gone for scared face. But I like that they're going for kind of a heroic, you know, Kind of, uh, you know, you, you get the arched eyebrow. He's got big bug eyes, but not super bug. But they're still, they're popping, so they're pretty good. The scar on his mouth looks good. The scar on his chin. All the cuts, the bloody ear, all look really good. I love that they're going for towards the last part of the film with the, uh, the part where his hair kind of goes white on the side. I do think his hair is a little light. The actual base of the black, I think, should be a little darker. But other than that, you know, it's kind of a, a muted... Dark, dark, dark brown, but the blood going down the side of his head looks good. Um, the, the fact they included blood on his neck, and even the fact that they textured his neck at all, like as a figure, that's a really nice detail right there. They could have gone with just like a basic stump of a neck, but they really did go the full mile and give you a detailed neck. Paint on the face looks good, the lips look good. Um, if My only complaint about the face is his eyes look really wet. Like, eyeballs should look wet to give him a sense of realism, but these are like almost too wet. Like, they're too glossy for my taste. It almost looks like he's about to cry. Although, if I fought Deadites, I'd probably cry. So, yeah. One of the coolest accessories this figure comes with is the boomstick, which opens up, and you can totally uh, take out the little shells, like they do come out. 
the right one's a little bit tighter, but it does come out. Well, there we go. So yeah, that's a nice touch. Um, in fact, let's see how close I can get to it. You can see that there's a little, you know, sculpted texture going like inward right there. Uh, yeah. It, my only complaint about this, well, I have two complaints. One, the, the surface is a little simple. Like, it's clearly just like a smooth brown paint with some lines painted on. But it doesn't really read that wooden to me. It certainly reads like a toy. And I know that this is a toy. It's a collectible. But, like, other companies have, have achieved more detail than this. And then also, this little section right here on mine came loose and not connected. There's a hole in there that you could tell, like, a plug should fit. Or at least some glue. And there is no plug. So, yeah. That's a bit of a bummer. But still, it looks rad. Uh, this also comes with an exclusive uh, hand. This is his possessed hand that he cut off, and the details on it are pretty nice. Um, this has some of the best paint of all the accessories in here. I like the little blood in the middle there. The nails look nice and gnarly. It's a good sculpt as far as like the, the actual pose it's in. Like I know it's just a hand, but it's got a good pose as far as the fingers and all that. And a little bloody stump on the back. This looks rad. Speaking of hands, it comes with three other hands, because the main hand on the figure is a uh, trigger finger left hand, but we get a relaxed kind of grip, the uh, left fist, and then a grip fist. Uh, and then we get the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, which, good sculpt, I like it. I mean, it looks like the Book of the Dead, I wish it opened, but for a closed book it looks fine, the, the pages painted on the side look decent enough. I just wish there was a little more detail on the paint. I feel like this could have more detail, more uh, use of like darks and browns, but um, still it looks fine. If you look at it in the movie itself, it is a bit simple by design. And then lastly, we get Henrietta's head, which uh, I'm a bit disappointed in as far as the paint goes. This, uh, look at the paint on the hair. It's just so simple. It looks like, you know, a basic kind of action figure. Uh, not a more high-end six-scale figure. If you look at what companies like Hot Toys or Big Chief or Quantum Mechanics, hell, Sideshow themselves have grown over the years with more detail in their Star Wars figures. Uh, this paint, to me, is pretty simple. Um, the, I mean, the mouth and teeth look pretty good. It's a great sculpt. Really fantastic, but I expect more from the paint job. And the fact that this thing retails for 240 uh, I'm going to keep talking while I assemble the base. Retails for $240, and then you pay like $17 bucks in taxes and uh, $18 bucks in shipping. This figure sent you back $275, bucks, and uh, I, I expect more for, for that price point, you know, as far as this paint job goes and the, the lack of detail in the book. So despite some of the accessories lacking detail and being a bit of a disappointment, the figure itself really succeeds. Um, there's a lot of strong details in it, including the little holster for his gun, which has some nice kind of like leathery surface to it. The little stitching on the side looks nice. Um, there's a look at like his butt pockets. You can see there's a little bit of uh, lighter kind of shading wear and tear where his butt would be. Uh, so yeah, and the holster is pretty functional. It's a little tight putting it in, pulling it out. No, that's what she said. But uh, yeah, let me give you a look at the chainsaw arm with the chainsaw itself. The little black section on the side looks good. The little metal connector points around the wrist look very nice. Um, and the blade itself is, well, awesome. I'll give you a closer look at it. The, uh, the blade is actually made of metal. The, the, the base of the chainsaw, red plastic. Very well painted red plastic. But the blade, I don't know what kind of metal, but it is metal. And I think it's great they put blood, bloody paint on it. Reads nice and splattered, and the teeth are all nice and, like, uneven and gnarly. So that's good. Just give you guys another look at the blade there and how it kind of meets the base. You can see the knobs there. The vent area looks nice and kind of dirty, so it's not just a plain red. There is some uh, black paint going around there. Um, also, the little edges of the red have silver paint, which kind of makes it look like the red paint has been scratched off and there's silver underneath. So props to Sideshow for doing a really good job on this chainsaw. The little wood piece on top of the handle looks good. The, uh, the little pull knob with the rope looks nice. Here's the gun placed in the left hand. Uh, the little loose area of the trigger area does get bumped by the index finger, so that's a bit annoying, but if you jiggle it around a bit, it does go into place nicely. I've got the figure post here with the uh, severed Henrietta head, recreating the whole 
you know, I'll swallow your soul, I'll swallow your soul, swallow this scene. So yeah, that's a, a fun little thing to recreate. Articulation on the figure is pretty strong. It does allow you to get him in some pretty cool poses like this. One problem I did find, though, was the uh, the way the pants bunch when I was trying to lift up his left leg for that previous pose with Henrietta. It bunches and really limits how much you could bring the leg up. So if you ever want to put Ash in a seated position, that might be kind of hard. It's also worth noting, as I change the hands out, that uh, the, the paint on the ball joint is kind of flaking off, and I just got this figure, so if you care about that sort of thing, that's a bit of a bummer. The other hands don't even feature paint, they just have a basic kind of light, light brown, or a tan kind of base to the plastic of the joint. That uh, trigger finger hand was the only hand that had paint on the wrist. Um, so yeah, here he is holding the Necronomicon. Like, this hand can pretty much hold two things. Necronomicon, or his uh, evil possessed hand, which fits pretty snugly into there, and he can have him kind of face off with it, like so. Lastly, the figure's left tighter grip hand fits really well onto the top handle of the chainsaw, and looks pretty good doing so. All in all, I really like this figure. I mean, I've been nitpicky about a few things here and there, because I do think for 275, this figure should come with more accessories, and the accessories that it does come with aren't that well painted and are a little simple looking. But the details within the, the outfit, the dirt on the pants, the paint on the figure, the detail on the face, hell, even just like the veins on his arms, there's a lot of good detail on the figure itself, and the figure saves it over the accessories. Um, 275 might be a lot for you out there, so you have to weigh that, but I freaking love the Evil Dead trilogy. Ash is one of my favorite characters in the whole horror genre, and having a figure of Bruce Campbell, the almighty chin himself, in six scale form is a big deal for me. Having Ash as a six scale figure is just amazing. I think the details on the outfit and on the face look great. Uh, having the, the, the almighty chainsaw arm does look cool. So as an Evil Dead fan, I am pretty happy. Reservations about the price, but I do dig it, and I can recommend it if you're a fan. So thanks for watching, everybody, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff.